Well, good evening, folks. Welcome to the Land Tamer stream. We are vlogging the CCIE routing and switching written, uh, well, routing and switching certification journey. Uh, specifically, lately, we've been talking about the written because that's been on the mind. Yesterday, I failed the CCIE routing and switching, switching written lab exam. Attempt number two, and I want to talk about that a little bit in terms of kind of how to recover and how to recuperate, make further attack plans, and particularly review the exam score report and, you know, my thoughts on that and some things have been passed along to me about that. So that's what we'll talk about tonight briefly. Um, this, of course, this is another shot of the most recent uh, Sunday night, Monday morning, most recent launch of the SpaceX Falcon 9 Block 5 rocket. Great shot. Not too far from here. And Mentors is here. All right. Good evening. Glad to have Mentors. Mentors is a great mentor for the community, many of the communities. Um, if, you, if you all would like to join us in Discord, that is a link to our Discord channel. But yeah, we'll be, we'll be brief tonight. Uh, last night, uh, you know, I... I took it easy. I did do a stream, a normal schedule, and watch some TV. Hey there, Big Abe is in the house. Also, Big Abe has also stepped up, started doing some streaming. I think I uh, did his first stream last night. I've got your link down here, my man. Um, anytime I see a new network streamer, I definitely give him a shout out here. So, y'all definitely give him a follow if you have not already. Last night, I think he streamed OTV technology. So, definitely check him out. OTV is great. OTV is also, you know, it's considered uh, primarily like a data center type product, but it is part of, it's not part of the lab exam for the routing and switching, but it is part of the written exam. Trust me. Um, <laughs> and you need to know OTV uh, when you sit for the written exam. So uh, I just want to pin big stream for the last night. Awesome. Yeah, I, I heard it was good. I did not realize uh, the stream. And it looks like around 9 was when the stream started, 9 p.m. Eastern time. So maybe in a couple hours. Uh, but if you want to get notifications, definitely follow him and definitely check out the Discord too. Uh, we got a couple of streamers now, including uh, Shwipe Interface Brief on YouTube. So, but yeah, going forward, uh, I just want to relate. So last night, so I took it easy. Watched a little TV, got to bed on time, and I was so tired, like, mentally uh, tired. It, it's not the same exactly as, phys you know, it, it's not as same as physical tiredness, but you all know what I'm talking about. I think a lot of us here are desk jockeys, too. People wonder, oh, how can you be tired? You, you've been sitting all day. Uh -uh, it's, that's not how it works. Mentally, you just get extremely drained. That's how it was last night, so I... I didn't even realize I had not set my alarm for the gym. So I kind of slept in a little bit this morning, and it felt good. I feel somewhat recharged. Um, I'm going to take it easy again tonight. I did want to stream because I have been thinking pretty much all day. That's what happens after a fail, right? You just, it's on your mind, like all day. As a matter of fact, last night I had a dream that I went online on my channel and I had a rage session about the exam, the written exam, difficulty, and, and the way, uh, you know, things were covered. And that I actually had gone online and looked for some of the terms or some of the technologies I was tested on. And I searched the CERT guides. I searched Cisco's website. And I was complaining that I didn't find any of that. <laughs> I didn't find it anywhere. And in my dream... Uh, the person in charge of the CCIE written exam contacted me and said, we would like to offer you to participate in a test group. Um, I don't expect that to happen. I don't want that to happen. That's not my problem, right? <laughs> but it was just funny that I had a dream like that. Oh, not a good look. Yeah, I, I just, it was crazy. It's funny how you dream about that kind of stuff, you know? And even some of the specific technologies uh, came up in the dream. But anyway, I digress. Um, so I had a lot of time to think about. Well, I didn't have a lot of time to think about it, but I have been thinking about it a lot. Uh, you know, it's not, it's still, the wounds are still fresh. And 
I think I pretty much decided today, I had to talk to my wife about it too, and one thing you cannot do with the CCIE is try to rush it. You're ready or you're not ready. There is a little luck involved, I think, in both the written and the lab, but you can't count on luck, right? So I think what I've decided is that I'm going to need more time than just the expiration date of the Evolving Technologies 1.0. Um, we, um, we talk, you know, we haven't had a break. I mean, actually I've been studying for, if not labbing, I've been studying for the written for quite a while and we haven't had really any trips or anything. So I think we settled on doing that in August. We're going to, we haven't decided where yet, but we're going to take a little trip and, um, heck it might even be a staycation, but we might go to the, one of the parks we haven't really done a lot in, in some of the parks here in Atlanta. We've been a good number of beaches. We've been all kinds of beaches, but uh, we've been to Kennedy Space Center a few times, Gatorland, but, you know, we may do something like that and just pace it. Because I was analyzing a little bit. I, I did a review of the score report. Man, I feel your pain definitely too well. You, you know what it's like, mentors. So, so, a lot of you folks know what I'm talking about. Uh, but I went back and I made a new sheet here in the blueprint. And I went and looked at basically this is the day I started studying for the written. Because I want to do an honest assessment, you know. Hey, we got a new follower. Thank you, Cog Whistle. Appreciate the follow. Appreciate the support on the stream. You guys are awesome. You guys and gals. Uh, enjoy your little uh, Bob Ross moment there. But yeah, I, I looked at the date that I started. And I was thinking, okay, this, this thing didn't really happen. Taking the written didn't really happen the way I had originally planned. And someone called that out on YouTube um, today. I had a really good comment on YouTube. Uh, come out to my coast. We have tons of activities with him. You know, mentors, I do want to check out the Florida Resident Program for Bush Gardens. I have not been to Bush Gardens ever, so we might do that, man. Hey, who knows? We might make a a uh, beer meetup out of it or something. Who knows? But yeah, so I, I started doing an honest assessment. All right, this whole written thing did not go according to plan. And maybe I, uh, not maybe, I for sure rushed it. So what happened was my plan all along, after getting input from some other students, after um, looking at, the INE videos and talking to some other folks, kind of their idea was, you know, get yourself somewhat ready for the lab exam first. Because, you know, once you pass the written, you have 18 months to sit for the lab. And that was my plan. So all along here, I have been uh, labbing, I don't know, seven months? No, it's more than that. Let's see, February, yeah, about eight months I've been labbing, going through the INE workbook every day. And I'd gotten pretty far, and then the opportunity came up to go to Cisco Live, and I learned that at Cisco Live, you get a free written exam. So, of course, at some point, I changed course. That, as a matter of fact, I can tell, because this is one of the benefits of streaming and vlogging, you got a timeline that the whole world can see, right? So I, I went back, looked at my videos, February 1st is when I changed course and decided to start studying for the written. And I started a countdown. And between February 1st and my first attempt in June, was the interval was 129 days, so about four months. Some people made the decision to start studying for the written, and in two months, they've taken it and passed. That's great. You know, that's not me. Um... But maybe that was a little rushed because, realize it or not, a lot of the topics in the written, take for example multicast or IGMP, those are more advanced uh, topics. And the written covers those, you know? So let's say if I had gone maybe three fourths of the way through or maybe gotten finished with the INE workbook. That probably would have been a good strategy to say, okay, you know, now's a good time to go back and 
take the written, right? That was actually the original plan. If I had gotten a little farther in the workbook, maybe the outcome would have been different, even on the first attempt. But there's still a lot of material that's covered in the INA, you know, that even finishing the INA workbook, that is still has to be covered to prepare for the written. Four months was obviously not enough. So then I looked at between the first attempt and the second attempt, 43 days. Uh, and it actually took me like a week to sort of recover. That was not 43 days of study. That was more like 25, 30 real days of, maybe 30, uh, real days of hard study, about a month. So I think I've kind of cut myself short in this plan. Granted, it was a shift. You know, sometimes in your career, in your life, you have to make adjustments. And that's what I did, but I don't think I've really given myself a fair shot sort of preparing for the written. Now, granted, I wasn't far off. If you could see, my first miss was by 48 points. Uh, the second miss was 70 points. Um, I think that just speaks to kind of the breadth of topics that there are, and there's no telling what you're going to get in, in each attempt. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to let Evolving Technologies 1.0 expire and 1.1 is going to go into effect. I looked, I downloaded today the, I thought I had, yes, I did download it. One second. I want to pull it up just a moment just to see maybe some of the differences. So I pulled down uh, Nick Russo's 1.1 study guide. That's essential, of course. And I wanted to see the, Blueprint. Let's just check it real quick. Evolving uh, Cisco CCIE Evolving Technologies. Yeah, I took a brief look at this before. Now, this is interesting. Okay. Yeah, so let's download the list. Oh, that's 1.0. Here's 1.1. Might be good just to compare here any of the differences. So let's start first with 8.1, which is cloud. You just hide that. Should have started with that. And. They've added high availability here. This has changed workload migration. That's interesting. Uh, compliance and policy. Interesting. Instead of uh, automation or orchestration, it talks about compute virtualization. Uh, Kubernetes, I'm sure, is going to be in here. Connectivity. So they've got SD WAN, SD Access. You know, it's interesting that I'm seeing some of this in the 1.1 and some of these terms having just gone through the 1.0 yesterday. That's all I'll say. Um, OpenStack components and wow, so I don't see OpenStack here. And I'm fine with that. Instead, they've got DNA Center, Cloud Center, and Kubernetes. Okay, cool. That is uh, going to represent, I think, a lot to learn, especially, I guarantee you, in the, at the depth that you'll be tested on in the written, based on what I've seen. Oh, we got some comments here. Sorry, guys. I have a buddy who can get you a discount. Okay, mentors. It may take a, uh, Frost Hammer. Haven't seen Frost Hammer in a minute. Glad to see you back, Frost Hammer. Uh, hope all is going well, my friend. Well, yeah, so then in network programmability, and this is the section that Dimitri was talking about yesterday. This has changed radically. Okay, they have NFV up here. Interesting. 
So I had it at 1.0. All right, controllers, API, scripting agents. All right, where is this? To me, oh, there was SD. We did have some SD WAN up here. It was under cloud instead of network programmability. I don't know. That's interesting. I really won't know. I don't want to go all the details, but I really won't be able to get a good sense of some of the subtle. Maybe some things have just shifted. But here we've got uh, DevOps methodology tools, workflows. <laughs> okay. All right. Interesting. So it's probably going to be good for me, folks. Because as you can see, Last time I got 70% in Evolving Technologies, and this time I got 10%. And if you see my sort of reaction looking at 1.0, um, just know that I'm not too disappointed that some of these topics are not going to be at least directly cited. Ooh, Git. I like that they have Git in here. See, that's practical. These, I think these are good changes. You know, getting rid of... Um, OpenStack components, thank you, Cisco. Good call on your part, I think. And changing that with Git and NetConf and RESTConf, I like it. Some of this is fresh, I think, at least for me. So data models, architecture, Yang, JSON, and XML. Interesting because um, somewhere that was implied in this 1.0 as well. Device programmability, control-based network design, northbound, southbound APIs, figuration managed tool, agent, agent less. That was already in 1.0. You know, that uh, sounds very much like, you know, Ansible and Salt and Puppet, etc. Good. All right, folks. So I feel pretty good about that. It, there are quite a few at least changes listed there. I think some of that might be cosmetic. I don't know. Uh, Frost temperatures. Yang's practical, and you'll use it if you use Ansible. Absolutely, man. JSON and XML are your two major data formats for sending and receiving data. This stuff is very practical, man. And, and I will say, like I said, I have seen, I've seen elements of that in 1.0 in my exams. Okay? Even though it may not have been spelled out, it it was in the 1.0 exam, so that's like I said. They can change the the names of the topics for the blueprint all they want. I got a feeling that some of they were already planning some of this for 1.1, and I went ahead and threw some of it in 1.0 to be honest. But yeah, this is very practical stuff. I work with this. Uh, if you work with Azure. Um, JSON is should be familiar in XML. I uh, guess been definitely been watching Dimitri's Ansible streams. That's good stuff. Okay, so I like I like some of that. I think maybe it's just sort of an acknowledgement of where they wanted to be, and they may have already sort of gone there in 1.0 in terms of how they implemented the exams. Let me just put it that way. Also, it looks like Cisco's favorite Vitella for SD WAN. It does, especially that you know. The fact that they own it, um, and it's going to mean more money for them, <laughs> for sure. Um, but yeah, so, good stuff. Yeah, Cisco bought Viptela, and, and Viptela was the new hotness at Cisco Live. Trust me, they had, uh, they had a Viptela party, they had, you know... Yeah, that's why it was that way, Frost Hammer. They, they just, you know, they bought them not too 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 long ago and it was ripe for purchase i mean i'm sure cisco wasn't the only um you know person trying you know the only entity trying to buy them they knew they had a good product and they got bought up you know swallowed up pretty quick so yeah that's you know i just want to kind of evaluate that and i think we're, i'm going to let the august 29 thing go and I'm just going to prepare for 1.1. So obviously it's going to take more time. It, I will not test in August. But I don't want to let too much time go by. 
I came close to actually scheduling uh, or buying and scheduling the exam today. Um, I just didn't have time, but I may do that tomorrow. And I may just select an arbitrary date, you know, like September 30th. Heck, I might just do that and not necessarily stick to that. But that's just going to give me, um, or yeah, about two months to just consider to review my strategy. I'm going to try to do a meetup here maybe next week in the Discord. We can do a video meetup and just, you know, might bounce some ideas off some of you folks. Just see what you think. Uh, that will allow me to at least take some time off, uh, probably in August, like I said. Yeah, know your limits in your life schedule. Um, you know, when uh, I think of a dog, you know, that comes back, uh, gets a, a fight, survives, come back, has to lick the wounds and heal and come back better than ever, right? So <laughs> uh, I need to do that a little bit. And not just, I, I think I realize that one of my... Uh, one of the underlying faults to my plan was just rushing it too much. There were other motives for rushing it. I was trying to catch up to to uh, show not not just to be competitive, but I wanted to get one of my main goals. Of this whole channel is is to start labbing with somebody. You know, I want to get back to labbing. I want to lab with show and and others and. Um, I think one thing that some of my other erroneous thinking and my attitude was um, viewing the written exam as a necessary evil, you know. In other words, in a lot of ways, the written exam, I think, is Cisco's way of putting a gate in front of the lab because just think about it. If I think this, I don't know if this was the case or not previously there used to be you know a two-day lab is to avoid people purchasing a lab paying sixteen hundred dollars and getting to the lab only to realize that they're really not ready to take it so i think the written exam is in a way sort of a gate or sort of a a filter to prevent people prematurely going for the lab you know and i, I respect that i understand that but that's probably not the best attitude, I think, on my part. I think it's a much better attitude to think, okay, the written blueprint covers quite a bit of material, folks, that is not on the lab. And I'm not the only one who has said that, but in retrospect, it's great that, you know, I spent a lot of time labbing before taking the written. I needed some experience with the protocols. Guys, I didn't get a lot of questions on those protocols. You know, your basic or essential or even some of the, the moderate, moderately difficult aspects of configuring EIGRP, BGP, OSPF, uh, RIP, policy routing, uh, QoS. I didn't see much of that. <laughs> I really didn't, you know. So there was a lot of things in there uh, these last two times that... Um, Things I need to learn, and this is an opportunity, really. I have to say, the 40, whatever, how many days it was, between 1 and 2, 43 days, you know, I really scrambled on a lot of technologies that I only had surface knowledge on, and now, thanks to that lesson I learned, um, I'm much more versatile and knowledgeable about those topics. Um I know what you mean, says Big Abe. Uh, fam first, their support team most definitely cannot have done any of this without my wife's support indeed. Uh, yeah, it, it affects, you know, it affects them. Absolutely. It affects your family. And, you know, when you're not taking a break, they're not taking a break either, typically. So, so yeah, we're both ready for a break, and, that, you know, that's what we're going to do. We're de definitely going to take one and recharge. Uh, good words. Frost Timber, how's your IPv6 holding up after attempt two? I have to say, Frost, I did much better on IPv6 yesterday. Now, I don't know exactly how that's reflected, because, like I said, uh, layer two, I did better. Layer three, not as, as better. VPN, I went up 10 points. And I attribute that to really, I studied the uh, IPv6 
tunneling technologies a lot. I studied the IPv6 NAT technologies. That may come under... See, I don't know exactly how they categorize. I'd have to look exactly at the topic blueprint. But I think I did better on that. But there are a lot of VPN technologies. I don't know if you saw my stream yesterday. There are a lot that come under the general heading of virtualization technologies or tunneling technologies and are not explicitly listed here. I saw a lot of those yesterday. So, yep, yeah, I'm pretty sure Advanced V6 murdered me. Um, but yeah, I, I spent a lot of time on IPv6. And that, so that's one side benefit, all right? And I was, I was tweeted to someone else yesterday, Cisco, one way or another, is going to force me to become an expert. Like, if they keep failing me on these topics that I'm finding that I'm weak on, you know, I'm going to keep studying. I want to study more and more and more diverse topics, deeper and deeper, until eventually I'm an expert. <laughs> That's my attitude about it right now. But, but yeah, I did better on IPv6. Um, again, what killed me... Now, let's say I would have got those... And just check this out. I don't know how these percentages... I haven't done the math. But you see I, I was short by 70 points. Look at the difference in evolving technology between this time and last time. Uh, rough, yeah. So, and services. And that kind of uh, shocked me. So if you look at infrastructure services... Security, uh, still, it was still tough. But I had studied a lot of security, and I think I may have fallen short in some of the IPv6 security. There's a lot of topics here. RA Guard, um, the Binding Table, Source Guard for IPv6. Yeah, the, you know, each of these topics needs to be covered for, in, in general or IPv4 and IPv6. Infrastructure services, what do, we, what do we have here? I'm trying to think. Okay, we got SNMP, uh, QoS. Like I said, I really did not get much QoS yesterday. But there was some QoS. Um, yeah, FHRPs, NTP. Yeah, I really... Okay, NAT is in here, so all right. All right, uh, IPSLA, NetFlow, yeah. This is covered pretty heavily, at least in my two attempts. Infrastructure services is does have representation for sure. Um, I would say I wish this was more clear in the grading policy exams, giving us a better breakdown. Any thoughts? Great discussion for circus meetup. Yeah, you know, to be honest, I was thinking about this earlier today. Um, trying to sort of evaluate your exam results and it's tough um i'm surprised knowing how ruthless cisco is with their testing i was talking to the test uh administrator yesterday so said, yeah cisco is they're the only ones to do this and this and this and uh i'm surprised they even give us this much to be honest um Yeah. So yeah, it would be good to discuss that. And uh, Show IP Interface Brief pointed out something earlier today. He said he was saying like, you know, Quentin, don't pay so much attention to the uh, breakdown because you show me this example. He was uh, thoughtful enough to share. He said, pick which one you think I passed with. And I picked this one. There is a 50, but there's a 100, a 90, a 73. He's like, no, it was a middle one where he got a 45. So, yeah, go figure. I don't know. I, I'm not going to give it a lot of credence this time. Last time I really focused on my low areas. Um, Frost Temperature says, yeah, because each of the exam categories have a myriad of topics that go into them. And I think some of them they categorize in the, into multiple. Some of the topics are categorized into multiple, so... Anyway, I'm going to consider getting some thought, folks, and evaluate it. Uh, that's really all I've done today is just spent some time doing that. I did get a shout-out on YouTube to one of the videos about drawing. 
Uh, they mentioned Draw IO. I actually checked it out today. It's pretty cool. I've never really used it. But I may use this more on stream when I'm playing around. Um, and then uh, there are some network membership options. You know, all, you all know I've been talking about network lessons. I think I have another two days to decide. And then it goes into $29 a month. Or doing uh, 200 and or $120 a year, I think. I'm probably misquoting those prices, but I'm probably going to do this. As a matter of fact, I'm thinking that I need to give myself more time and be more thorough and have a more sort of, you know, if I were to go back six months ago and say I'm going to, I'm going to plan to study for the written, what sort of material would I go through? Um, this may be a candidate for sort of going back and doing some of that and not skipping some of the areas because um, I really like this material so far. Uh, and then there's Packet Pushers Ignite, Network Collective. There's a lot of stuff to subscribe to these days, a lot of different network content. Um, I've been considering doing a Packet Pushers Ignite, but I just want to evaluate. I may do some more discussion on this tomorrow. So I'm just kind of, it's just a teaser, really. I'm not going to go into this too much today. Uh, Me Chunks, definitely check out Big Abe. Follow him. Uh, this was a good... this. Uh, uh, brief briefing in brief about Ansible. It looks like Greg Farrow attended the Red Hat a Red Hat conference, and he had some things to, think, to say about Ansible that were pretty cool. Uh, some good summaries. Definitely check that out. And then I think Big A posted this or uh, Banner MOTD about why use OTV for Miney. I think I've seen this video before, but I watched it again. You definitely need to know OTV for the written exam. We say that much. Um, so yeah, check out the video if you have it before. Big Abe says, Pack is my listening material on the way into work. Yeah, pack, they've got good stuff, man. And I've fallen behind on packet pushers. Um, and I need to find some way to fit that into my schedule where I'm doing chores or something to, to get caught up. But I do get the link propagation, and sometimes I just use that as a prompt to... To see, pick things that I want to listen to. Mentors, you're going to leave us with a challenge question. I really like the questions idea. Okay, all right. That is good. Um, I haven't thought of one, but... Okay, here's one. So OTV, since we're talking about OTV. What are the interface types for OTV? And how do and what are the requirements for each? How's that? I bet Big Abe knows. <laughs> but just think of that in your head. That'll be our challenge, our puzzler. Put me on the spot there, but that's good. I like it. So just think about that, and tomorrow we'll review that again. Um, I don't know if I've gone over that on stream or not. I definitely, I definitely spent some time on this between exam one and exam two. So I'm prepared to answer that for you guys. So yeah, good stuff. And this video will probably uh, answer your question, uh, answer that question. Thanks a lot for tuning in, folks. It's been about a half hour. Uh, I appreciate everybody stopping by. It's good to see all the Tamer group in here and to collaborate and encourage each other. Uh, I'm loving what I'm seeing in the community, man, the participation in Discord and the things people are doing uh, for Big Abe and for Show and some of the other folks who are, are, are getting into streaming. Um, I'm actually going to share. Tomorrow I'll do this. I've been listening to a podcast of a gamer. But this person, he's really smart, and I think I've cited him before, but he just put out, he does it every Sunday, he puts out a podcast about streaming. And he's been doing it for several years, he's successful, and he's had his ups and downs, and has a lot of wisdom to share. He also came from a job prior to streaming, prior to full-time streaming, 
uh, being a professional streamer, he was doing, um, he was selling uh, partnerships with YouTube. So he's been in the media business for a while, but for you folks uh, doing the streaming, he has some really great suggestions. Uh, not so much, I mean, he does have things to talk about monetization, which I'm not really concerned about, but he talks about how, you know, he has some great tips about engaging your audience and um, how to stay motivated for streaming and things like that. So I'm going to be sharing that with you folks. Probably tomorrow I'll get a good link and talk about that a little bit because um, I, I, I love it. I love what I'm seeing and it's really helped me and I know it'll be help and I know it's helping you folks too. So it's a great job. Thanks so much. Y'all have a great night and we shall see y'all tomorrow here in the Land Tamer stream. We'll do it again and we'll talk more more bits, bites, and you know, we'll grind. We'll keep on grinding away. Take care, folks. Have a good night.